It's extremely wet here in southern Victoria, just outside of Geelong. This wet weather that we've had, and we're now sitting at Decile 7, is not only creating issues with logistics, but it's promoting higher disease pressure. And our number one disease in this region, and in fact across the high rainfall zone and into the medium rainfall zone of Victoria, South Australia, Tasmania, has been the disease Septoria triticide blotch. And here I've got a susceptible uh, variety in the shape of revenue. And you can see clearly all of the lower leaves are actually browned off, but when you look at them in more detail, they're actually covered in the black fruiting bodies that we call pycnidia. That will give rise to the next set of spores. We've been working, looking for, trying to find varieties that are more resistant, and we're beginning to see them coming through the system. This is RGT Cesario, and you can contrast the lower part of the canopy in terms of senescent leaves. But why is this wet weather disease so difficult to control? Well, first and foremost, the reason that it is more of a difficult disease to control is the fact that it has what we call a very long latent phase. So when you pull this crop apart, the susceptible one, what you actually see is that the disease isn't affecting the newest emerging leaf or indeed the leaf that's fully emerged there. In fact, it's a full two and a portion leaf behind the newest emerging leaf. And that's not to say that the disease isn't already incubating in those upper leaves, but because the period with which the disease incubates inside the leaf is so long, it means we have at least two clean leaves before we actually see evidence of the disease in the canopy. And that's what makes it difficult to keep a handle on, particularly later in the spring when this crop moves from its tillering phase into the emergence of the key leaves. So when our wheats start to approach that growth stage 30, 31, 32 period, that's the primary time to look at our first fungicide application in wheat to combat a disease such as septoria. And remember that globally, this is a pathogen that has started to overcome fungicides around the world and here in Australia. So when it comes to that first fungicide, particularly with your triazole fungicides, such as your epoxyconazole or opus, or your prosaros, um, prothioconazole, uh, tebuconazole mix, think about trying to make sure that your rates are robust in a wet spring, because those triazole fungicides form the backbone of hitting this disease. In the last few weeks, it's been confirmed that the septoria pathogen has been found in the southeast of South Australia to be resistant to the QOIs or the group 11 strobilurins. We use two of those products or two of those active ingredients to control septoria triticide blotch is oxystrobin and paraclostrobin. A mutation has occurred in that septoria population in SA and at this stage we don't know how widespread it is but the G143A mutation as it's referred to has occurred in northwest Europe and closer to home in New Zealand. So what does it mean? Well right now it's very difficult for us to tell whether this mutation is widespread 
throughout the Septoria population. But we know from experience elsewhere around the globe that that resistance mechanism has actually increased quite frequently in the population. And the resistance is increased over a period of two to three years, such that in Europe there are parts where strobiliorins no longer control septoria triticide blotch. What can we do about it here in Australia? I think first and foremost, until we know just how widespread the mutation is, we need to make sure that if we're using products that contain azoxystrobin or paraclostrobin, that the DMI triazole that we put with it, your epoxyconazoles, your pothioconazoles, whatever it is, you make sure that those rates of that partner are very robust in their own right to be able to control the disease.